Hey everyone, I am Russ of Renewed by Russ. Today we're gonna to be looking at the way we expanded our kitchen storage. We have a very small kitchen and one day we, mostly my wife, uh, was just done with seeing things tucked away in the corner, all over the countertops, in odd places around the house because we didn't just have a functional place to put it. So I got on Facebook Marketplace, I found some old display cabinets that were for sale. They were actually from a salon that was closing. I went and rented a U-Haul and picked them up and they worked perfectly for our space. With some pretty significant modifications and additions, they look like they were there all along. Uh, so the space is a lot more functional for us than it used to be and it looks really nice. So take a look while we update that. Here's some before and after pictures of our kitchen. It's much more functional, but it still lacks a lot of storage space. And everybody has those things that they can't find a place for, or they use very occasionally, but it's still really nice to have, and we just didn't know what to do with those things. This wall here has a lot of opportunity. It was too small for our kitchen table, though. It made it hard to use the door. And this stuff always found its way over here in the corner. It just made everything really busy. You can see some art supplies. My furniture flipping stuff ended up over there a lot. Ideally, we wanted to open this wall to expand the kitchen, but it's load-bearing and there's plumbing. So instead, I found these old display cabinets at a salon that was going out of business. They were super heavy, so I started taking them apart in the truck to make them easier to move by myself. Those are big old mirrors on the back that we'll have to worry about. They were 50 bucks a piece, and a pretty good deal considering the cost of lumber. So I decided, while I was trying to tap out these mirrors, that I would put some tape around it in case they fell out unexpectedly. You can see just how that worked. Yep, okay. I bet I say yep, okay, five times a project. Anyway, so I got smarter, brought them over here, and started tapping out the mirrors on top of that old drop cloth. So in case it did fall, it wouldn't shatter. It was a good thought, in theory. Broken before it even touched down. So after filling up the dumpster with a lot of broken glass, it was time to get these suckers in the house. Also, how relatable is this sound that I'm about to make? 100% reminds me of doing projects with my dad. Just that little sound of tiredness and exasperation. At this point, I'm just playing with the layout and getting opinions from my wife. If we put them together, they'd look more like a big bookcase. Seeing if we could put a little desk on the side, and it was too small. And we wanted to see what things could we put under here to make more space and what little cabinetry that we had. My other thought of having them together was if we ever wanted to take out that wall, it'd be easier to move these without having to rip out built-ins but we're just gonna go ahead with what we're doing right here. And then putting a chair in there to see if this worked as a functional little desk space so we could keep the computers off the kitchen table when we were both working downstairs. And it looks like it will work. So this is what we decided to go with. And here's just a little idea of what it will look a little bit like in the future. Although we're gonna make some pretty significant alterations. So now I'm building boxes to go underneath these tall display cabinets. These will become a lower shelf. There's four inches on top that I'm gonna rip off with a circular saw, and that leaves us 13 whole inches total before we'd hit the ceiling. Well, with a little bit of leeway. So I'm building these boxes just for more storage. We weren't gonna go through all this hassle and the cost and not maximize every inch that we possibly could. Wood glue is so strong, so, so crazy strong. So what I was drilling are called pocket holes, and that is a Craig jig. And it allows the screw to go in at an angle, but come out of the middle of the width of the board you're using into the board that it's attached to. So you'll see I'm brad nailing it here just to secure it while I put these screws in to that board. But you'll see the vertical board also has those pocket holes. That's because those are going to be driven into the base of the cabinet you're looking at right now. So it's taking these back outside so I can cut off those four inches of extra space on top. And 
I'm scuff sanding with a 120 grit sandpaper. This is a really smooth laminated surface, so to get the primer and paint to adhere better, you always scuff sand. And if it didn't make sense before, these are what those boxes are for. So the box I built on the bottom, plus the black open spaces on the bottom of the actual cabinet, will be covered with a door. And that's me drilling that cabinet into the base of the other cabinet. And then of course, using plastic wood to fill all of the shelf pin holes. We don't want to see these because we don't want to move the shelves around. We want to make it look like a built-in. If you need quarter inch-ish material, I almost never buy it in plywood because quarter inch plywood is double the cost of what is called hardboard. I don't even know what you use hardboard for actually, other than it's half the price. So I always buy hardboard if I can get away with it. Because I want the cabinets to be pushed exactly against the wall, I'm just ripping out the trim where these will go. Making sure everything's as level as possible. It's just going on the tile floor and it's not perfectly laid, so trying to make everything as square as possible because I am going to be putting a desk between these two. And I don't want things to roll around if we put a round object on these shelves for any reason. They weren't perfectly level, so I'm shimming them up. just making sure everything's as square as possible and I'm using these two boards to make sure they're flat across the front because after all I am going to be adding that desktop in. It's really important to do because home interior walls are not that flat or square. So here I am just cleaning everything up before we prime and my favorite primer for laminate surfaces like on these cases is Kills Oil Based Primer. These laminate surfaces, like anything you'd get from Ikea or Target or Walmart, are not porous, so paint and primer don't soak in. That's why I use Kills. It's extra strong. Plus, these are going to be highly utilized storage shelves. A lot of people put really cute things on theirs, but ours is going to be holding really functional things. I hope it's still really cute and it looks really nice, but function is its number one priority. 12 hours later, I can hardly take this off, pressing very, very hard. So now I'm using the actual paint color to get all the corners just with one coat, because once I get all the shelves in here, corners are just hard and they collect goop. You can see here, at some point, the ceiling was repaired, probably because of the bathroom right above it. So I'm having to gouge out the drywall, this terrible patch that they did, so when I put the trim piece across the top, it will not look all weird and I don't have to fill it in with a ton of caulking. So this is to save me time. Ironically, I nailed it in before I'd cut it to the right size, so it didn't save me any time. Taking it off, taking out those little brad nails, cut it down to size, and now I can caulk the top and it will look good. Putting in the face frame pieces, this will give it a more finished look. I'm really excited about this. Speaking of big gaps, hmm, what is that on the top left corner? Oh well, we'll fix it later. The gap was so big I couldn't wait till the end to caulk because I just wanted to make it look more complete. Caulking makes everything look better finished. I cut two identical pieces to help me put this first level in. This will be the top of a shelf, but underneath this piece that I'm putting in right now is going to be a drawer. And it's going to be a line of drawers all the way across the built-ins. We don't have any junk drawers, and it's nice to have things like that. So that's what this bottom narrow space is going to be. I'm also making sure it's very, very level. Being level, oh, pause for a meme. Being very, very level is important because all my upper shelves are going to be based off of the bottom shelf because I'm gonna use similar type spacers like you see right here to put in all the other shelves. So I was just spending a lot of time making sure they were very level. I was worried the shelves were too square. When they're more rectangular, you can lay things out horizontally without this big awkward gap up top, but they ended up looking fine in the end. I was afraid we'd be limited to just one big item in each shelf. It kind of based us off of one appliance we specifically wanted to use in this space, and that made me a little bit nervous. 
but it ended up turning out really well, and I'm glad we went this way, but I had that concern even after these things were finally finished. So I'm putting on my first coat of paint uh, on the rest of the built-ins, and this is where it really starts to take shape, and you really start to get excited because you can see a finished product, and I love that feeling. This brand of paint is an HGTV brand that we had used for our kitchen cabinets a couple years ago, so we just got the same color, same brand. It's a semi-gloss. One coat, my butt. I painted these things like four times. This final trim piece on top is meant to wrap around the inside and the front. I really want a piece running vertically where that blue tape is to seal that huge gap that you're seeing right there. I really did want to show you how I built these doors and drawers, except it was a little bit of a learning curve for me too. And when I'm trying to make a video and build something and really concentrate at the same time, I struggle. Um, and I forget to capture the good components and the learning opportunities of the build. So I wanted to show you exactly what I was thinking here and why these were harder to build than I had thought. A, this trim piece in the middle, uh, what do we call these, face frames? Uh, I think it just makes the whole thing look sharp, but one of the things about the face frame is there is a gap on this side. You can see my fingers are recessed and a gap on this side. But here at the very edge, there is no gap on the other side. It's completely flush with the outside, which means the distance from side to the inside is different than on this side. Um, in part because this goes against the wall. Uh, I did scribe this to fit more perfectly against the wall so I could still have a reveal, but it's not the same. So I couldn't just make the exact same doors and drawers. Maybe a professional or somebody who knows more about this would have a better way of doing that, but I had to make these individually by size, and that was hard for me and it took a while. That's why I didn't show myself putting these in because they went in piece by piece and I did a lot of alterations to them once they were in, uh, and they weren't all identical. So. That's why you see these doors and drawers just suddenly appear. But I will let you watch me paint them. Here's a quick tutorial on how to set your hardware if you don't have a jig for it. You can see I just made this tape as wide as the trim piece, found the middle, drew a line on it, took my hardware, I could see the line through the tape, and there's also tiny lines on the hardware. So I could place it perfectly on the sticky side and I just punched a hole through. Then I put it back up and I have the perfect holes. Similarly to you and you do your projects, I had no idea what I was doing here, which is one reason I was putting them up with brad nails before I secured them with actual screws so they'd be easy to replace if I didn't like it. Making sure the height was good, typing looks pretty good so I guess it was, and then measuring to get my final pieces in. This is exactly what I mean when I say walls are not flat or square. Because they had to put the drywall up and put compound and tape and compound over it, they're never going to be perfectly flat. So we'll have to account for that when we put up the actual desktop. Otherwise, visually, there would be a huge gap or a lot of caulking that filled that space and it would just look wrong. Here's a trick I learned. My wife just texted me dinner was ready, if you heard that. You take a washer, you roll it along, and it gives you the perfect distance that you need to cut along. The gap in the middle is too big to go all the way across, but it gives me enough to work with. So I ran this piece out to the garage, I cut it, even though there's this big gap, it'll look a lot better, I promise. Now you put it in the second time, and I can handle that, I can live with that, and caulking will fill that in perfectly. Getting my final marks. Cut it to the right depth, filled in these little brad holes, cut a little hole for the extension cords and the laptop cables and the cell phone chargers to go through, cleaning everything up, and boom! Where did these drawers come from? I wasn't going to show you how to actually build those because those were also a guess for me because, surprise, the desk wasn't perfectly square. We thought about doing two drawers, which is why I built two drawers, but we liked the look of just one drawer front to make it look more like a shelf or like a thick desktop than two drawers would allow. So this is edge banding. It's actual wood with an adhesive on the back and you literally just iron it on. So I ironed the first part, held it till it was cool and dry, and just ironed the rest on. And here's the caulking. It's my favorite part. Look how sharp and clean that looks. 
fills in the gaps perfectly and it makes everything look finished and like it was built in there to begin with. Not gonna lie to you all, because half of you are probably my mom. Uh, we had already figured out exactly how we wanted this to look and move things all over the place. I stood up till 2 a.m. one day, which is very atypical of me. I usually can't last past 10.30, deciding how we wanted this to look and staging it. And then I just put on a nice shirt and pretended to stage it for the first time like I am that organically creative. So the KitchenAid is actually what we built the height of these shelves around. We wanted to get it off the counter because we primarily use it during the holidays and it just took up a lot of space. It's pretty, it's a cool color, so we decided to put it up here on the shelves. And I really like how it looks. Finally, weeks later, the correct light shows up, it looks great in our space, and it definitely makes this spot a little more warm and cozy. And it wouldn't be complete without a little bit of art by my sweet wife, Allie. Now enjoy looking at our functional and useful space.